Canon has released a couple of new cameras earlier in the day today. Let's check out in this video if these two cameras can be the ultimate YouTube content creator or a vlogger setup cameras for the future. When it comes to daily vloggers or travel vloggers, there are four important things uh, that they look forward to in their camera when they pick up the camera for their uh, content creation. The first and foremost thing being the image quality or the video quality. The so second thing being the autofocus because they are most of the time filming themselves and you don't want to end up seeing an autofocus image of their face when they are vlogging. The third important thing is ergonomics which directly uh, translates to the size and weight of the camera. The fourth most important thing is the flip out screen because they need to know what they are framing and what they are seeing in the screen uh, when they are filming it. So there are so many cameras out there in the market but there is no single perfect camera which can solve all these issues. If you take an example of uh, something like Canon 70D or 80D. It has a flip out screen, it has very good image quality, it has an APS-C size sensor but again the low light performance might not be that great and even the size is slightly on the bulkier side if you want to travel along with it for the whole day. When you look at the Sony side of things, uh, you have something like 6300 or a 6500. Uh, it has fantastic image quality, superb autofocus, but again, it doesn't have a flip out screen. So there are a lot of uh, issues that comes with the cameras that are there in the market. So if we directly jump into one of the two cameras that was released earlier in the day, which is the Canon EOS 6D Mark II. This particular camera sort of fits in in all those four pillars and probably can solve all the issues that a travel vlogger or a daily vlogger look forward to. So let's look at it at a point to point basis. The first and foremost thing is the image quality, which is directly related to the sensor size. 6D Mark II is a full frame sensor camera and it comes with a brand new 26.2 megapixel CMOS sensor with DG7 processor, which means to say that it will have a fantastic image quality and definitely a very good ISO performance being a full frame sensor. Second most important thing is autofocus. Compared to the first generation of the 6D camera, this camera now comes with 45 autofocus points and all of them cross step autofocus points. And the most important thing in this camera being the dual pixel autofocus, which is one of the things that Canon is really famous for. It really works fantastic in live view mode or in the video mode. So this improvement sort of addresses the autofocus point of the vlogging cameras. The third important thing is ergonomics. This camera is like relatively very small and this is sort of like in lines with the 70D or 80D or slightly even smaller. So this is nowhere in lines with your 5D Mark III or 5D Mark IV. So this is a small uh, compact and light uh, form factor camera. So this definitely will not hurt your hands when you're traveling all day along with it. The fourth most important thing is a flip out screen. Yes, now the Canon 6D, which is a full frame camera, now comes with a flip out screen. So all the issues that we had mentioned uh, in the beginning of this video are sorted through this camera. Flip out screen, autofocus, ergonomics, as well as very good image quality in the form of full frame sensor. You might ask me, this doesn't have 4K. Now the question goes back directly to you, is 4K really important for you? And here we are talking about people who do daily vlogging and do travel vlogging. So there are three things which we can address when it comes to the requirement of 4K in cameras like this. I personally, I would have liked to see uh, 4K uh, capability built into this camera, but I, I personally felt that Canon is trying to play safe by not including 4K in this particular camera. And they are trying to keep this segment uh, separate from the 5D Mark IV camera, which, uh, which comes with a 4K capability. Talking about 4K, there are three important things which you need to ask yourself when you are trying to shoot in 4K. First and foremost thing is the archiving, whether you are in the field or when you are back home, when you are doing all your backup and all. Are you really ready with all the data backup solutions for the gigabytes or terabytes of the 4K footage that you shoot? That is one of the things that you definitely need to answer. The second thing is when it comes to reusability of the 4K content. The type of content that gets generated uh, with the daily vlogging. Are we really reusing this type of content? And if we are reusing, is 4K really a must for this type of content is what you need to answer as well. The third and most important point is the editing. Most of us who do traveling and do uh, video shooting and all things, we, we don't usually carry a very high end laptops along with us when you're traveling on the field. So the turnaround time when it comes to shooting in 4K, editing it and putting it on uh, YouTube or on social media becomes more when you're shooting in 4K. Whereas when you compare it with the full HD footage, you can 
probably edit it with a much uh, medium or a low end machine also and put it out in YouTube much faster. Uh, just like the first generation of 6D camera, this camera also comes with the Wi-Fi, NFC and Bluetooth capability which will help you transfer your photos on the field to your Android or iOS devices. And this continues to have the GPS functionality wherein you can tie your images uh, with the GPS coordinates of that particular location which will help you earmark that location if you want to uh, revisit that place again in the future. The second and most important thing that I was surprised about when I saw the camera specs is the price tag. Considering that this camera cannot shoot 4K and uh, it's it's only a full HD 60 frames per second camera, Canon is still pricing it at around $2000 for the body only and $3100 for the body with a 24105K lens. This roughly translates to about 1.3 lakhs and 2 lakhs Indian rupees which is quite high compared to what you can get in the market especially in the form of GH5 which has a far more superior 4K recording capability and along with that you have so, so many features like slow motion and things like that. But what Canon also says is that this camera is capable of doing in-camera 4K time lapses. Now let's move on to the next segment which is the beginner uh, content creator segment. So this is exactly a segment wherein people who wants to migrate or up their game from their uh, mobile phone uh, style of shooting of videos to a basic or entry level DSLR. There are two main requirements for these type of content creators. One is the image quality. They definitely want a better image quality for the price that they're paying for the camera. Second thing is the price. They don't want to be shelling out too much of money when it comes to investing on a DSLR camera, especially when they are beginners. So this is exactly where the second announcement comes into picture, which is the Canon Rebel SL2 or 200D. This particular camera, that's a SL2, answers both those questions really well. SL2 comes with 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor with DG7 processor. SL2 is actually an APC sensor camera. So with the DG7 processor, you can expect a very superior image quality and a decent performance when it comes to high ISO shooting. The second most important thing is a price point. You're looking at about $700, which roughly translates to about 45,000 Indian rupees for this particular camera. And this definitely is a very good starting point for the folks who want to get into the DSLR world for the shooting. These could be people who want to do some sort of like a tech related YouTube channel or probably informative or educative type of YouTube channel or could be even something related to beauty or something related to cooking. These are the folks who don't want to shell out too much of a money uh, in the very beginning of their career or in the very beginning of their content creation path. And also they want to get decent enough image quality at a very low price. So SL2 actually answers those questions. What you can also notice in the specs of this particular camera is that this comes with a nine point autofocus and one cross type autofocus point. But most importantly, the Canon has also introduced dual pixel autofocus into this entry level camera as well, which is definitely a big win for all the users of this particular camera. One another thing that I found noticeably important in this camera is a feature assist, especially for beginners who want to know what are the type of settings that they need to use to get a certain type of image. There is a specific feature in the camera which will basically guide you in setting those values so that you can get the right type of image that you want. Canon didn't miss out including a three inch uh, very angle LCD on this particular camera. This is definitely important for the folks who wants to see themselves and frame themselves when they are filming uh, their particular content. So these are some of the points that I really found it very helpful and useful especially regarding this very entry level and budget friendly camera the Rebel SL2 or the 200D. And just like the other camera that we mentioned about earlier in this video, the SL2 also comes with Wi-Fi, NFC and Bluetooth capabilities which will enable you to transfer the photos from the camera to your Android or iOS device and post it on social media. But unlike the 6D Mark II, this camera does not come with this GPS tagging capability. This camera is even very good for people who want to get started with photography. This is not a type of camera which you'll pick up and go out and shoot wildlife or sport or even an indoor concert. But it's definitely a good camera to put it into manual mode and learn the intricacies of a DSLR camera and practice it more before you invest on a much better and a higher end camera going forward. So hope that sort of answers my perspective on how these two cameras which is a Canon EOS 6D Mark II and the Rebel SL2 which is 200D how they fit into the YouTube content creator community or the beginner YouTuber or a beginner travel blogger and a daily blogger community. And this were my perspective on how it could actually solve the issues of the missing camera in this particular segment. Please do let me know what are your thoughts on it. And if you are someone who wants to get into daily vlogging or probably even start doing some YouTube content creation, are these the type of cameras that you are looking forward to? And if you feel that there is something which you need and is missing, 
let me know in the comment section below or if there is something else that you expected from this Canon 6D Mark II and SL2 that you were not able to find apart from the ones which I already mentioned let me know in the comment section and probably we can take it forward and have a small discussion as to why Canon might have probably missed out those features. That's it for this video. This is me Shiv signing off from technology. If you really like the video make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already and comment if you want to say something and most importantly keep smiling. I'll see you guys again in the next one.